Good morning, everybody. I'm Alicia Pellerino from Sapienza University of Rome. And I'm um, here to introduce you, Boros, uh, a CubeSat based multi angle, multi spectral EO system that we designed for this competition. In particular, uh, we are nine students from Sapienza University of Rome, all attending the Master in Space and Astronomy Engineering. So, I'm going to uh, start talking about the current scenario, uh, then the mission concept, all the mission segments that we designed, the CubeSat configuration, and then I, uh, I'm going to go deeper inside the main technical uh, aspect of our optimal payload, and last but not least, of course, our implementation plan. So, uh, we decided to focus in particular in, uh, into the optical domain for what concerns the Earth observation field. In particular because we are uh, most interested in this part of application. So, um, we uh, want to use especially an optical sensor to, um, to analyze uh, and to gather land information to uh, detect um, properties about the air pollution and uh, to investigate better all the climate processes. But we started uh, analyzing the current potential potentialities of uh, the NASA's Terra satellite launched in 1999, and uh, in particular on the MISER, the multi-major spectrometer, that is uh, an optical sensor able to uh, view in nine different view angles and uh, in four spectral bands, RGB and near infrared. So these are the current uh, images and uh, current data available about, for example, atmosphere properties that uh, the miser uh, is able to, to collect. But um, especially for what concerns the detection of the, um, the activity of all the volcanoes, especially in our country, for example, Vietnam, uh, or also um, Volcano, and uh, we want to be able to better detect uh, the ashes uh, that came came from them. And uh, uh, for what concern uh, the pollution in the air, but also the detection of the dust into the atmosphere, we uh, decided to focus into the capabilities of uh, different view angles uh, um, compared with different spectral bands in order to gather more information with respect to what we are able to collect now only with the, the naive point in probability. So, uh, in particular, uh, we uh, focus on this sensor because uh, we, um, ex um, now it, it is not so much reliable, also because it's at the end of its lifetime, but also because uh, it's, um, it's affected by this main problem. So, um, it, it's not sufficient for accurate analysis uh, and, uh, um, uh, we need more data reliability. So, uh, we uh, designed a cluster of small satellites in order to uh, ensure a higher data reliability and uh, uh, to obtain it with a very low cost. So, starting from Terra, we uh, decided to design our cluster of uh, four 6U CubeSat information flight in order to, um, to obtain similar data. Uh, so we don't want to reproduce the miser, but we want to um, have the ability of gather similar information. Because, uh, um, as you can see here, um, now uh, all the uh, current cluster of constellation of nanosatellites are equipped only uh, with the nadir pointing sensors. Uh, okay, uh, they have a very high, uh, a very high uh, resolution. For example, Planet Lab is able to see at a, a spatial resolution of 5 meters, but uh, it's not able to gather the information that we want to gather by using op an optical sensor. And uh, for what concern uh, um, the current ability, so the other sensor on board Terra or the other sensor, uh, there are no more, no more no, not so much optical sensor uh, currently on board uh, huge sat um, large satellite with these potentialities. So, uh, these are the main requirements of our mission. In particular, we want to, uh, be, to, to obtain nine uh, views and uh, um, 
to gather information in the, the cinema for spectral band, or we, uh, we hope to obtain, we, this is our main aim, to obtain uh, into the RGB and near infrared bands. But, uh, uh, of course, we uh, are designing a new concept, so we have to adapt it in order to uh, create a, a, the, compa the compatibility with a nano satellite. So, um, our, uh, for what concerns the radiometric performances, uh, we uh, have a very high sensitivity. Uh, on the basis of the miser uh, main requirements, uh, we need a sub-kilometer of ground resolution for what we want to serve. A stable pointing, so we need both an attitude and an orbit control system, and uh, we have quite a lot of data per day, so we need uh, also um, up to 50 megabits per second. So this is the main overview of uh, this, the, the main the main mission segment that we designed, starting from the space segment, so the, each CubeSat and uh, the cluster to the ground segment and the user segment. In particular, we are developing uh, this idea inside our university. So, especially for what concerns the academic field, we want to spread the knowledge that we will be able to gather uh, at a very low cost or for free for what concerns uh, this um, main environment. So, all the university, um, the, university the academic field. For what concerns the main parameters of the orbit that uh, we need, uh, we need a sun synchronous sun orbits at uh, an altitude of around uh, 500 kilometers with these main parameters. But uh, for what concerns the orbital decay, we uh, performed uh, a, um, an analysis by using uh, DAS uh, 2.0 um, that is available due to the NASA license. And um, we estimated that for our expected emission lifetime, we are going to uh, have an orbital decay of around 25 kilometers, by considering uh, a launch window that starts in 2018. This is uh, the, um, our ground segment. We uh, designed a network of six main ground stations at high, medium, and low latitude in order to be able to, uh, downly, uh, to download all the, uh, the data that we are going to collect per day. In particular, this is the analysis that we perform for what concerns the amount of um, access that we will have per day uh, for all the latitudes that we considered. And we estimated that uh, uh, per day we are going to collect around 10 gigabytes of data. For what concerns the launch segment, we decided to remain in Italy, but uh, we decided to use Vega also because uh, uh, it is able to ensure a very reliability about the precision that for the mission in orbit, and we need uh, quite um, a huge precision to insert our constellation in orbit, but uh, we um, had two main supervisors that came from uh, Hedrin, the ESA Center for Observation that has also uh, the department that uh, that uh, manages also the department about the Vega, and we are uh, waiting for the, um, the new Vega C that will be able to ensure also higher performances. And uh, uh, we estimated that for what uh, at the end the, the, the first launch is uh, scheduled for the end of the 2018. That is the, the same date uh, of uh, what we expect to uh, finish our, our um, development phase. So, uh, this is the, the main overview of the CubeSat configuration. In particular, we need two main uh, configurations, the configuration A and the configuration B, because uh, um, our optical sensor, uh, the capability of our optical sensor is split in four CubeSats. So, we need uh, uh, 40 cameras, uh, because uh, we have nine view angles and uh, four different spectral bands. And uh, due to the, the need of uh, find the correct compromise to the, to the nano satellite capability, we decided not to use mechanical filters, but to have uh, um, four cameras for each band that we need. Uh, sorry, um, four cameras for each band for each view angle needed. So, uh, in the first and in the latter. Um, uh, CubeSat, we are going to have tw 12 cameras uh, with the three view angles, and uh, in um, the two uh, CubeSat, 
In two minutes, we're going to carry eight cameras. This is our mass budget. For what concerns the optical payload, uh, we consider the uh, nano camera and uh, um, uh, per four cameras, we uh, estimated one kilogram. And uh, as you can see, the, 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 main, sorry, the main difference between the, the two configurations is uh, focused on uh, the, the main payload. And um, uh, let's go deeper the design of our uh, CubeSat. We divided um, the, the structure, the bus of our CubeSat, of each CubeSat, in two main uh, modules. In particular, the 3U service and control module uh, will carry all the subsystems needed for the well functioning and the operations of our CubeSat. So, for, from the onboard computer, the power system, the attitude dimension control system, the patch antenna related to the TTNC, the orbit control system, and um, the drug sale for the CubeSat <coughs> orbiting in order to uh, respect the IDC. Uh, the, ABCS guidelines. So, uh, for what concerns our onboard computer, this is our preliminary functional schema. Uh, in particular, uh, we need uh, um, a, um, a redundancy about the ability of the um, because our, uh, one of the main potentialities that we need is the ability to understand each CubeSat we need to understand and to um, communicate where it is into the orbit. So. Uh, the GPS is very important inside this uh, scheme. So, for what concern our power unit, we are going to carry uh, a um, main Zenit uh, 6U body mounted solar panel on the Zenit point in phase and uh, uh, two additional double deployment uh, system and uh, last but not least, uh, to do you but wanted recovery panels in order to uh, augment as much as possible our ability to um, storage uh, power. <coughs> so by considering travel junction cells, uh, we will be able to um, gather uh, a power around uh, 30 watts with a peak of 41 watts. Um, for what concerns the deployment mechanism, we are going to use uh, ingest and torsion springs, but it's quite it's uh, the same that uh, is currently used by the CubeSat of Planet Lab. So, uh, for what concerns that the attitude determination control system, uh, we need a very stable uh, attitude determination control system. So, uh, our CubeSat will be three-axis stabilized by using uh, uh, a reaction wheel system and uh, three million torques for data saturation. Um, in addition, we will carry uh, several sensors, in particular a start tracker and uh, a final lift sensor, and uh, to um, be able to reconstruct the uh, versor of the sun, see core sun sensor, and in addition, uh, one fine sun sensor. For what concern? The orbit control system, um, in addition to the GPS receiver, we are going to carry a coal gas propulsion based uh, on uh, carbon dioxide and uh, we will need uh, for Favir to uh, compensate uh, the 25 kilometers that we estimated during the orbital decay analysis. For what concerned the um, TTNC, we are going to have on board an expand transmitter and the low, pay, low gain patch antenna that I showed you before in order to be able to communicate to all the ground station of our network in all the possible elevation angles. In addition, as the couple, we are going to carry also an s antenna useful for the command support. So, for what concern, uh, in order to achieve the high data rate that we will need, we are going to use a, Q, a QPSK modulation, but um, we also use a, uh, we'll use a convolutional code with the rate of 0 0.5 in order to um, decrease the minimum level of the required uh, error per bit, per error bit uh, energy per bit to noise watts. So, um, for, we, for our link budget, we consider the worst case condition and uh, by uh, considering this main hypothesis, we, estimate, we uh, obtained a link margin of around 7.2 decibel. Because um, I, uh, we uh, thought that the, the previous uh, link margin uh, had not 
a uh, so good limit. So we try to improve it in this last part of the development of our idea. So what concerns the orbit sale, uh, we're going to carry um, the Artica drug sale developed by LPC Space Mind, that is an Italian industry located near Bologna. And, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to go just quicker. So this is uh, um, the configuration of our payload model, in particular the two different configurations for the number of cameras, and we have designed a rail-based system to um, to ease the payload integration. But uh, for what concerns the design of our payload, we uh, perform a feasibility study on the basis of this main hypothesis, and uh, we uh, estimated uh, that the main feature of our uh, optical payload will be this uh, for what concerns the ground sample distance in both intrac and cross track. A, uh, common uh, focal length for all the cameras because in order to decrease their cost, so 21 millimeters. Uh, we uh, based our analysis on the miser optical quality factor, but I'm going to show you what we estimated for the optical quality factor, and we uh, use the pass filters for all the band needed. So uh, these are the main results for what concern the um, the Q factor. So um, we estimated that the needed lens aperture will be around 10.5 millimeters. Uh, for what concerns the resolution, the re resolution at the ground, these are all the resolutions that we estimated for what concerns the, um, all the angles and the bounds. But, and uh, for all the cameras, is respected the requirement that we will have a resolution, a sub-kilometer resolution. And this is our uh, quality factor that is inside the range of the minus one. So, uh, we perform also momentum analysis into the spectral analysis in order to uh, quantify the system spectral resolution. And you can see here the, different, uh, the, the difference between the miser and the Horus one. But in particular, uh, we obtained uh, um, the spectral responses of, sorry, of our system and, and uh, uh, it will ensure in the RGB band a, performance, a better performance respect to the miser one and uh, a similar performance what concerns the near infrared band, but we are going to work on this and uh, I'm going to describe you something in the next slide because we perform also radiometric analysis uh, on the basis of the ORUS uh, estimating optical feature and uh, um, all what we, re uh, what we want to obtain into radiometric performances. So, on the basis of these uh, integration times, we obtain that. Uh, um, by considering an equivalent, an equivalent reflectance from the, the surface that goes from 2 to 100 and, the dark current no and this dark current noise and redout noise contributions in, uh, in, uh, in each band we, are be we will be able to obtain at least 100 has a signal to noise ratio that is uh, um, one of the main requirements compatible with the miser performances. So, as my conclusions, we are going to be able to obtain at least the miser geometric capabilities um, in terms of signal to noise ratio, if not better, for what concerns the RGB bands. Um, we will need, especially in the case of a 100% of graphic cancer, a high full weight capacity, and uh, we estimated that uh, for what concerns our CMOT sensor, um, we will use a, a customized component, and uh, we are still looking for the best trade-off for what is currently available, or is currently um, studied. So uh, these are uh, the risks related to our mission, but of course the main important uh, uh, is not the technical part, but uh, the possibility to uh, not have so, um, sufficient funds to develop it, but uh, for what concerns this part, we, this is our grant, so we uh, have planned to finish uh, all of the uh, development phase uh, in, um, at the end of the 2018, in particular, now we have quite just finished, or we, have, we are finishing our preliminary design review, and uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, our professor from Sapienza and uh, our uh, mentors that came from Hesri that are Pierre Philippe Mathieu 
and uh, Gordon Campbell for the scientific and the technological part. We are going to uh, apply for, because in a uh, in few months uh, ESA is going to release the fire satellite proposal. So this is one of the, our main uh, opportunity to gather funds because we will need uh, to develop the, the, um, the, the constellation around 1 million euro, euros and uh, uh, around the same uh, for the launch. But uh, we are quite, um, we, have, we still have funds and uh, we are going to develop the, the part related to the critical design review and we are waiting for their response. So, uh, thanks for listening. I hope that everything is clear. Or, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions from reviewers? Uh, this is uh, quite a complete uh, proposal, so congratulations Thank for you. it. Uh, it was difficult to find something to ask, but I see that in your mass budget you uh, allowed 0.3 kilos for the orbit control system, but not anything for the fuel. You're saying it one, in one paragraph that you need one kilo of fuel to maintain a constellation. I, I don't need one kilogram of fuel. I will need 0 0.08 per one kilo of a spacecraft. Okay, so now I saw that as well, but I thought uh, just later you said uh, the propellant mass required is one kilogram by considering the selected propellant, specific impulse 50 seconds. Yeah, yeah, you know. It's 0.08 kilogram per kilogram of satellite, and then uh, Oris weight is about 10 kilos, and that's about 0.8 kilos of fuel. So uh, that's one thing I noticed, and the other one is... Uh, I'm going, I'm going to, to explain you better this part, because... I... Okay. So, um, this study was based on... Uh, uh, a paper that we found, published from uh, the University of Hawaii, about uh, an orbit control system that they are developing for a um, 3.5 kilogram satellite that uh, uh, will have a weight of around 0 .0, 0 0,170 grams. So, for, um, we estimated that uh, um, they are going to uh, carry on board this part really for what concerns the fuel and uh, for what concerns power, the balance, we will need at, at least two times the related fuel. Yeah, it depends on the propulsion system. If you have an electric propulsion system with a very high ISP, you need less fuel. But in your case, you say you're going to use a, um, a cold gas propulsion system, yeah. and for that you will need more fuel. So I think you just need to look at it because 0.3 kilos for an orbit control system that's cold gas uh, with propellant okay. seems a bit low. Okay, we're yeah. going to... Just another thing is you're using magnetorcus to dump momentum from the wheels, but I haven't seen a magnetometer in your sensor list. A uh, magnetometer to measure the magnetic field. So how can you use the magnetorcus if you don't know what the magnetic field is in body axis? Are you going to calculate that? So I'd like to ask you a question which is not in your paper and not in your presentation. Okay. You are going to fly a formation. Yeah. And uh, usually you have requirements for formation flying. What is the control box, relative attitude and position? What are your 
Charles thought about that. Okay, so uh, we uh, estimated that the angular division of each satellite with the other one will be at least 2.3 degrees in uh, two anomaly in the same orbital plane. We, and this uh, will ensure us uh, to avoid the collision between each CubeSat for the constellation. In addition to this, uh, we are going to uh, have uh, a uh, plus and minus uh, um, because we estimate a cylinder uh, around each CubeSat. And for what concerns the precision uh, in, uh, in the interline between uh, two satellites, we will need around five kilometers of, uh, um, of um, uncertainty. And for what concerns the, uh, the other dimension, we will need uh, two kilometers of precision. So it's quite reliable. For what concerns, yeah, because um, for what concerns the searching in orbit with the Vega C uh, is able to ensure higher performances, and uh, we uh, want to uh, have on board more pro more fuel and more propellant for what concerns the orbit control system, because we um, uh, we size it on a 10 kilograms satellite. Uh, our constellation is uh, okay, it's 9.4, uh, but this is uh, what uh, we expect now at the preliminary design. So, so uh, uh, my question is about uh, attitude to control system. So you already have the uh, uh, did the uh, analysis of the requirement for the attitude control system, like uh, attitude determinant, uh, determination accuracy, and attitude stability, and also the pointing accuracy. Okay, uh, we are going to need a 0.1 degree of pointing accuracy, and for what concerns the attitude, uh, we uh, need uh, um, at least. Uh, Uh, do you want to know the exact uh, answer? Answer ten No. Yeah, yeah, we did it. Yeah. Okay, so this is a specification of the Yeah, 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 of course. No, I have. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Then you should show. Yeah, yeah. Apart from the mic, mic, mic. Okay. Okay, well, one quick question, and, um, and then and then we can let you go. You, you, you're basically using primarily commercial off-the-shelf, you know, available components. Yeah. But you mentioned that you're looking for a custom sensor. Yeah. Uh, CMOS. Have you guys looked at the cost of developing a customized sensor board? And if you don't, what is the savings versus science quality? We, uh, we are performing a trade-off because uh, we estimated that uh, the, the only main problem of our of a sim, uh, available signal sensor will be in the near infrared band because as I showed, I showed you uh, for what concern this is the only part in which we could have problems but of course in the preliminary design and what we want to test in the first part of our design and development we are going to use uh, something that uh, have to be proven so something available on the market and uh, we are going we uh, just contacted several universities that are developing something related to this uh, um, not called sensor not not called sensor because uh, the main problem is the the, high, the need of high well capacity it is around um, one million electrons so um, we performed all the analysis related to the, for the design and uh, we uh, obtained these results. And now we started just before coming here to um, activate some collaboration in order to uh, verify the related. And, and you've done a great job. I'm not saying that you've done anything wrong. Oh, Everything no, no, no. is good. The, the one thing that I would like you to look into is 
um, you are a fraction of the cost of, of a traditional mission. At, at $1 million, you're really inexpensive. If your science quality is a little less, yeah. you'd steal a partner. Yeah. So don't, don't, don't worry too much about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, we need to go. We need to go. You want a question? If the time, time slot is used up, then it's okay. We all have to be disciplined. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.